Hello, and thanks for tuning in. Today, I'll be discussing the world of alternative medicine and therapies. Specifically, I'll be talking about a fascinating topic that has been gaining traction in recent years, and that is psilocybin and its various benefits and healing properties. And I've done quite a bit of research over the last couple of months, so got some interesting things to say. And joining me today is our special guest, my good friend, Mel. Hi! <laughs> Thank you for being here with me. She's going to be a bit of a sounding board, and she's going to tell me a bit about her experience with psilocybin. So thanks for being here, Mel. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, a bit about myself before we dive right into all the research I've done the last couple of months. I've chosen this area of research first because it's very interesting to me, and it has a lot to do with the field of psychology. So it's, it's good stuff, and I really like learning more about it. And with that, I grew up in a household where one parent, my father, was Western medicine. He was a gynecologist. He's retired now. And my mother, who was and still currently is in Eastern medicine, she owns and operates her own acupressure business. So being with two different parents, I got to see very different perspectives and differences in types of medicine. And the differences I've noticed in their attitudes towards their work has only expanded the thought that this is the area I should put my energy into. Through my research in the last few months, I've come across various studies showing the benefits of psilocybin and other naturally occurring substances. In the majority of the articles, authors were in favor of psilocybin and found time and time again that it's incredibly useful and a healing substance that deserves much more time, attention, and research. Before we get into all of the research I've done, again, let me describe what psilocybin is. Psilocybin is a naturally occurring psychedelic compound found in certain species of mushrooms. You may have heard people talking about taking a mushroom trip. Those are the mushrooms we're talking about here. Psilocybin has been used for centuries in traditional healing practices and more recently in clinical research as a potential treatment for a wide range of mental health conditions, including depression, anxiety, and addiction. So last couple of months, I've done a lot of research on this. I've probably read 10 to 20 different articles, all talking about different topics and areas of research within psilocybin and all of that. So to make this a little bit easier on your ears, I've made a couple different categories that I'll group facts into and try and make it make a little bit more sense. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, I need that. You know, anything for you, Mal. <laughs> so my first group of information or facts from various different studies is titled psilocybin versus conventional antidepressants. Oh, okay. Have any familiarity with antidepressants? Yeah, this is actually, I'm really excited to hear about this because I've been on many different antidepressants mm. and I think the first one I was ever prescribed was when I was 13 years old, oh. so a decade ago now. Young, a whole decade. Yeah. So in the last 10 years, how many antidepressants would you say you've tried out? Specifically antidepressants, I would say five or six. Okay. Um, but the range of prescriptions dealing with anti-anxiety medications, sure. antipsychotics um, sure. is a lot higher. But antidepressants, probably five or six. And I've spent a lot more years using pharmaceutical antidepressants as medicine than I have using plant and nature as medicine. So I'm excited to hear about these okay. findings. Okay, interesting. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yes. Yeah. So the first study that I was looking at was looking at psilocybin treatment for treatment-resistant depression. So depression that isn't being treated well by your typical antidepressants. So they were trying psilocybin for these people. And what they found was that psilocybin treatment can effectively reduce depression symptoms, anxiety, and anhedonia. I don't know if you know what anhedonia is. I just learned that this year. I don't year. know. Tell me. Yeah. It's the inability to feel pleasure. So that's like okay. your main symptom that of depression. Sense. So there you go. As well as all of that, Psilocybin was able to increase overall well-being and life satisfaction. The treatment was well tolerated with no serious adverse events reported. Everybody was totally fine afterwards. There were significant relationships found between the psilocybin experience and changes in depression scores on a variety of different questionnaires. And they also found higher doses of psilocybin resulted in greater intensity of positive effects. So the more psilocybin they're taking 
the more likely they are to feel the positive effects of the drug. Additionally, psilocybin may have potential for protecting against relapse to depression, which is huge because, as you probably know, once people wean off of their antidepressants, there really isn't much protecting them against falling back into that depression. That's huge. For sure, for sure. That's why I like to call antidepressants more of kind of a tool for not feeling so low anymore, but definitely sure. not like a resolution to the problem. In right. Any way. Yeah. You're just treating the problem, but you're not looking to solve the problem. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I am curious, though, what was the dosage of psilocybin that these patients were being given? Yeah, that's a great question to make to make the research they were performing valid and reliable. They had different groups taking different doses of psilocybin to see the differences so in one group they had i believe it was five milligrams they had a 10 milligram group and then a 25 milligram group and let me just tell you what they were able to find real quick since you asked that so there so participants values for experience of unity spiritual experience blissful state insightfulness and complex imagery were all found to be significantly higher at the 25 milligram dose other rather than the 10 milligram dose so again the more you're taking of psilocybin, the more likely you're going to experience positive effects. I completely agree with that. But just as a quick disclaimer on that note, I want to say once you're exiting the microdose stage of psilocybin use, you're entering an entire different ballgame where that's where the hallucinogenics come into play. But staying in the microdosing stage where we're under half of a gram, really. So all of those measurements that were being taken in the, in the study I completely agree with these side effects. You would consider this dosage level to be like a microdose, probably. Yeah, yeah. That's the terms that they kind of use as microdosing psilocybin. Sure. That makes total sense. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so I want to jump into this next study that I was looking at. Again, similar. But this time, they were looking at people with cancer. So people that are especially in pain and going through some of the worst times of their life, right? So they were looking at psilocybin or niacin, niacin being a vitamin B supplement found naturally in foods and whatnot. So that was used as their control or placebo, if you will. And so this trial found that there were, again, no serious adverse effects attributed to psilocybin or niacin, but that's predictable. And there were no psychiatric hospitalizations or cases of prolonged psychosis or hallucinogen, persisting perceptual disorders, so nothing like that. And the most common medical and psychiatric adverse effects from psilocybin were elevations in blood pressure and heart rate. There was headaches, nausea, transient anxiety, and transient psychotic-like symptoms, which were all known and tolerable effects. This is something we've been knowing, right? And another thing I feel like when there's nausea and headache as a side effect of the psilocybin, it is not only at a low level, but it's not the entire time. Right. That and when you consider these people with cancer going through chemotherapy, way worse. Side can you imagine? Other yeah. Imagine the pain with that. So if, yeah, I like that you said that. It's it's minimal it symptoms. Is, it's very minimal. Right. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. And so I just want to continue on here. They also found that psilocybin produced immediate and sustained clinical benefits. Let me say that again. Immediate and sustained. And sustained. That's right. Clinical benefits with significant reductions in anxiety and depression symptoms. We knew that. And significant antidepressant response rate at both the seven week and six and a half month follow up period. So they were checking in on these people after doing this trial and found that even after a prolonged amount of time, they were stu- still doing really well. I so love that. And I don't doubt that at all. Yeah. Right. Interesting to hear. Right. Especially after the research has been done to tell you what we've been thinking. The research proves. Yeah. Love it. So when your everyday average person thinks about taking psilocybin or any hallucinogen for that matter, they're probably concerned with how is it going to feel? What's it going to be like? What's it going to feel like afterwards? You know, they might have concerns about flashbacks. That's what this next study I looked at was looking for, seeing if there was any flashback phenomena after the administration of LSD and psilocybin in controlled studies with healthy participants. So as in like unlocking something that maybe was stored in your subconscious? Because sure. Of- yeah, that's a good way to okay. put it. Anything that would be 
frightening, I suppose. That, or hard to go through. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Exactly. So in this study, they had 142 participants where only 13 people reported experiencing flashback phenomena after drug administration. So of those people who reported the flashback phenomena, it was about 8% who said this after LSD, about 8% after psilocybin or both drugs, it was about 15%. And of all of these flashbacks that were experienced, they experienced, they only lasted for a couple seconds to a few minutes. So nothing too crazy. They're quick for sure. Right. Occurring once or just a couple of times. So I also look at it as more of something that you kind of have to work through anyway. Sure. And this plant medicine is going to aid you in working through something unhealed right whether you like it or not it's gonna bring You're something ready. up for you yeah right yeah that makes sense so out of all of the participants the 142 of them only two subjects found the flashbacks to be actually unpleasant none of the participants reported impairment of their daily life to these symptoms so nothing was affected in their day-to-day they again they were only lasting a couple of seconds a couple of minutes so nothing too serious And only one subject, again, of the 142, reported recurrence of flashbacks after the end of the study. And none of the participants met criteria for hallucinogen persisting perception disorder at any time during their entire investigation. Okay. So interesting, right? Yeah, that is really interesting. And I just feel like I'm trying to listen to you from the scope of someone who hasn't experienced this plant medicine before. And it sounds scarier than anything that you actually would go through. Because, again, uh, the flashbacks are really just probably past trauma that you've buried Mm -hmm. and a part of you is ready to heal from. Mm -hmm. And I think that plant medicine is the ultimate healer, right? It wants us to heal. And sometimes that's hard. Yeah, that's its goal, right? It's looking to solve the problem instead of just treat. Exactly. And that might be hard to do and be a little scary, right? It is a little scary. Worth it, I think. It's so worth it. Sure. Thanks for sharing that. Of course. The next study I was looking at was a trial comparing psilocybin-assisted therapy to acetylopram for the treatment of depression. To make a long story short, both groups showed similar improvements in anxiety symptoms, but to focus on the psilocybin group, they had a greater increase in overall well-being and life satisfaction compared to the acetylopram. Acetylopram. Group. Thank you. What would I do without you? (laughs) With that, positive effects of the treatment, such as feelings of peacefulness, joy, and connectedness, all were increased compared to the other group. With that, the percentages of patients who had anxiety, dry mouth, sexual dysfunction, or reduced emotional responsiveness were higher in the acetylopram group than in the psilocybin group. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. So, again, not to sound like a broken record, but psilocybin seems to be hitting all the marks here over and over again. Yeah, it sounds like in all of these studies, it just keeps proving that It really just improves the quality of life. Yeah. And I'm looking forward here to my next study. And again, psilocybin at a dose of 25 milligrams showed significant and rapid antidepressant effects compared to the lower doses, which were 10 milligrams and one milligram. Yeah. Well, just jumping in there on uh, you keep mentioning kind of like these studies testing different milligram usage per patient. Yeah. And um. I, I would only agree with that. I kind of started out at a little bit a uh, higher dose than mm. I think that I should have been for microdosing. Sure. And I was taking like three milligrams is what it would have been. Okay. And um, the research I had done was kind of telling me 10% of what you would take for a full dose. Sure. Um, so for like a trip induced dose. Right. So I, I do want to make that clear here. All of these doses that I've been talking about aren't enough to make somebody if you will trip right like yeah. see all the colors and hear sound or you would, you would hear sounds anyways hear <laughs> hear colors see sounds you know yeah that's not what that's not yeah. what's happening with these people no if you are taking like i was saying earlier anything less than half a gram you're not going to have any of the hallucinogenic properties of psilocybin right. induced but yeah. 
the overall sense uh for me i say i really set these intentions at the beginning of my uh microdosing journey Mm -hmm. for patience compassion and just overall calmness like contentness connectedness Yeah, yeah yeah and so i feel i i i really just feel more present like yeah. I feel like I'm more in my body and less in my head. Yeah. And I feel like I'm able to see the beauty of the life around me and really connect with the, the thought of nature and earth. I feel like you become more of a biocentric and less of an egocentric person mm-hmm. when you're using this plant as medicine so in a respectable important manner. important in today's world, right? To oh, we your need this. own individual and understand that. I genuinely think that plant medicine is kind of the gap between the destruction modern humans are causing Mm -hmm. and healing the earth, right? Like I was saying, it's a healing medicine. It has healing powers. And sometimes that's hard, Uh but regardless, it's healing. And it's just, it's sad to know that so many of these drugs, air quotes, are schedule one drugs. They're, which, which- Can you elaborate that on me? Yeah. Or can you elaborate on that for me? Schedule one is technically meaning that it has- A high dependence and abuse potential, right? And that there is no medical medical use, no like official medical use for the drug. So another example of a schedule one would be marijuana. We've got psilocybin up there, heroin. So and then example of a schedule two. So that also high dependence and um, toler or dependence and abuse potential. But there is. A medical use for it so that would be like okay. morphine right okay does that make a little bit more sense it makes sense to me with the scope at which i uh view this country and pharmaceutical mm. You're right agenda and but it doesn't make sense really no, no no and we've we've gone over this in my psychopharmacology class and people ask all the time like okay so we've been doing all this research on these drugs right there's obviously no potential for abuse or dependence why are they schedule one? Why are they illegal? And what we always go back to is the biopsychosocial model, right? It always goes back to something probably social, why it was villainized in the first place. Well, and it's funny with this conversation that these studies are needing to prove the lack of a dependency. Sorry, you're using, you know, yeah, these big and terms. Dependence yeah, dependence potential. Mm-hmm. Because I was on prescription medications that I was told by my doctors Mm -hmm. and experienced literal dependency to. Sure. Like, I was on a Fexor, and that has... Is that an antidepressant? Yeah, a Fexor is an antidepressant, and it's also a nerve pain medication, which is actually where the side effects kind of mostly rooted from. But if I were going on or off of this pill, I would have to do it extremely slowly because Mm -hmm. I would experience something called brain zaps, where my Mm -hmm. body was missing the chemical coming into my body sure and my brain would zap i don't i don't even know how to explain it your brain's kind of freaking out like where is this chemical that i've been given every single day for this extended amount of time it's kind of like um excuse me ma'am yeah what are you doing here it's just ironic to me that plant these plant this plant medicine used in respectable manner right with the microdosing with using less than three milligrams is what is all these studies, dosages, that they would consider that to be a Schedule 1. Mm-hmm. But these medications that would have you completely numbed out, that yeah. would have me losing 10 to 20 pounds a month on sure. them because my body was rejecting them. Yeah. But I couldn't go off them because my brain would yeah. have withdrawals isn't you're, considered you're just a Schedule 1. picking the lesser of two evils, right? Exactly. Like what's going to be less worse? And then you choose that one. Yeah. That's That's a sad choice that you have to make. But yeah, you're in a fortunate position now. And I do feel so fortunate. And I feel fortunate that I've had the help of my psychiatrist kind Mm. of under the table because we're not in a legalized state yet. Sure. But having her professional help and guidance through my entire psilocybin plant medicine journey yeah has been all the that's, more so I that's feel- important to have that support system right it'd be i think it would be a 100%. difficult journey to begin completely on your own not impossible but likely to be better if you've got that good support system especially with the way that it's viewed in this mm-hmm. culture and in this country and uh the lack of access i think we have to this plant and also the fact that it's not legalized everywhere it's criminalized yeah. right so technically what i'm doing is not legal and I morally don't feel 
like I'm wronging anything because right. I'm actually healing. I'm actually the least <laughs> suicidal I've been since I was 13. Right? You since feel I was 12. amazing, genuinely. I feel so good. How would something like that be illegal? At the level, it's illegal. And I don't think too. it's fair that it is. No, and that's that's why we're doing all this research. And that's why we're here. <laughs> that's why we're here. I've been looking into this stuff because my biggest question is why? Why aren't we doing more if every single study is saying psilocybin's working and it's doing great and it's helping people and it's beneficial and it's a plant that you can grow for basically free, right? Yeah, and you know, my thoughts on this get a bit too political, but mm. I know exactly what you're saying, and I don't think it's fair. This yeah. completely should be... I think be. others would probably agree, yeah. so I got you. <laughs> the next article I was reading was really looking into experiences post-taking psychedelics. What their main findings really consisted of were that therapeutic intention and setting can predict the intensity of your emotional breakthrough, and indicating that the context in which the psychedelic is taken is highly influential. Let me explain really quick that the emotional breakthrough inventory, as well as the mystical experience questionnaire, significantly predicted post-psychedelic changes in well-being, suggesting that these state predictors are important in understanding the longer-term psychological effects of psychedelic experiences. And the study overall was able to provide evidence for the potential of therapeutic benefits of emotional breakthrough experiences during psychedelic therapy. So basically what you're saying is the magic in magic mushrooms lingers longer than the mushrooms. Wow. Never thought about it that way, but yeah, yeah <laughs> that's it. That's totally right. So when I was reading this one, I was really thinking of you because I was wondering, have you had any emotional breakthroughs or anything of the sort that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, I think that the emotional breakthroughs are definitely a huge part of, well, the psychedelics are, are presently in you, right? right? But I actually think that the real magic happens afterwards because, mm. I don't know, the way I always explain it, and again, I'm not using any scientific terms here, it's just like how I kind of try to word it to my friends. Sure. It's, it's like, well, these plants are in your system, they're kind of, it feels like they're literally building new pathways for your brain to think in, right? Yeah. And those pathways are still built after the psychedelics. Right. Are out of your after system. they've left your system. Like yeah. there's still these new like neuro neurological pathways you've created. And ways of thinking, yeah. ways of seeing things. But mm -hmm. that's where the work actually comes in because it's so obvious when the psychedelics are in you that this is the way I should be perceiving the world. Right. But then when they aren't in you, you realize that that's the way you should be perceiving the world, but you have no aid. You're you back know? to reality. Yeah. You don't have the the magic in you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's still there. And it's, yeah. I think that's what the beauty really is of microdosing is that it's kind of like instead of, you know, taking a full dose trip and experiencing these changes. So in that way, it's almost like this construction team comes in overnight and rebuilds yeah, the it's city. It's like an all at once thing. Yeah. And that's a lot. It's yeah. a lot to rebuild a city overnight. Yeah, no right? wonder people get scared. <laughs> yeah. You can't build, rebuild a city overnight. But if you hire a team to slowly do mm -hmm. it over months, mm -hmm. right, there's probably going to be a lot better infrastructure. Quality. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's and a good way to frame it. I've never thought about it like that. I and haven't either. I just came up with that. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> Somebody write that down. It's I think I think we recorded it. Oh, <laughs> gorgeous. We're going to have to listen back to that. That was amazing. Yeah, I want to hear that part again. Replay. <laughs> Hire a team to slowly do mm -hmm. it over months, mm -hmm. right? There's probably going to be a lot better infrastructure. Quality. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's Wait. Wow, it almost sounded even better the it second better time the around. Second time, I think. Yeah, so. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I truly do think that that's that's the beauty of microdosing is kind of not giving yourself all these things to, you know, change mm -hmm. or see differently at once, but to kind of slowly do it over time. Yeah, it's really beautiful. There's our difference in Western and Eastern medicine once again, right? Exactly. It's not yeah. just a band aid. Yeah. So I wanted to. Bring it back to controlled substances a little bit like scheduled drugs with this next study I was looking at. It was called The Abuse Potential of Medical Psilocybin According to the Eight Factors of the Controlled Substances Act. And I just wanted to tell you the main findings of this study in particular. 
they do. Again, similar to the other ones, but just to reinforce what we've already been talking about, right? So the researchers found that the combination of psilocybin and therapy was more effective in reducing depression and anxiety symptoms in patients with life-threatening cancer than the placebo and therapy combination. So I, I don't know the placebo in this specific case, but something that isn't doing what psilocybin is, something that isn't working to fight depression. And are right? we talking like clinical talk therapy? Yeah. As a therapy? Yeah, okay. like psychological therapy is what they're referring to here. They found that patients who received the, the psilocybin and therapy combination reported improvements in mood, attitudes toward life and quality of life, and a decreased fear of death compared to those who received the placebo and therapy combination. And I think that the de- decreased fear of death is really important to point out here because I, I didn't mention before, but this is this study was on people with life-threatening cancer. So who else in the world is going to have more fear of death than somebody with life-threatening cancer, right? And this, and this drug, psilocybin, is allowing them to have a decrease in this fear of the inevitable, which to have a more blissful end of life, right? It's, it's so important, I think. And yeah, to continue on here, the effects of psilocybin on depression and anxiety were sustained up to six months after treatment. Again, that sustained effects, right? Again, here, and the study found that the psilocybin and therapy combination was safe and the adverse effects were mild and temporary. You could probably guess headaches, nausea, fatigue, the same stuff we've been talking about on a very mild level. Again, we're talking about people with cancer who are probably going through chemotherapy. So that needs to be considered, especially here. And the researchers concluded that psilocybin-assisted therapy could be a promising treatment for patients with life-threatening cancer who experience like especially significant psychological distress. On top of that, I've also read research that links not having fear and having rejection towards the end of your life and towards death yeah what can that do for you yeah to to have that it can help you cure your cancer there you go i've read things i have i have no sites to source (laughs) here but i have read things sure yeah well and i appreciate that just anything that you've heard because some of it can be more true than we think right yeah just to add to that, too, I was looking at another study that was talking about psilocybin-assisted therapy and the treatment of tobacco addiction, and they that study was able to show that it's more than helpful in treating tobacco addiction. And it although it only focused on tobacco addiction, I would dare assume to assume that, too. yeah, it could probably help out with other addictions. You name it, right? Interesting. Yeah. So even though I came in here today before this conversation with you, already definitely believing in the power of plant medicine and Mm. and how it can heal i've learned so much from you today that's only making me believe all of this so much more it can help cure addictions Mm -hmm. it can make a more blissful end of life or just life for cancer patients yeah can help reduce anxiety and depression and not only help reduce but have prolonged effects right of sustained positive effects after even short amounts of treatment. I mean, imagine like your whole life using psilocybin, right? I mean, you're somebody that began your psilocybin journey early. I think that's incredible. What has it looked like for you? What have been the benefits? And I want to know if there's been any downfalls of this. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, it's not a linear journey. Like, I don't think anything is, Mm -hmm. right? But especially with healing. um, I will say that when I started my journey with psilocybin use, it was definitely not... uh, I didn't have the same respect held for this plant that I do now. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, from my perspective at that time in my life, when I was 19, it was was a fun and social thing to do. But I had only ever heard positive things about it. Yeah, I just I want to just butt in and ask a question quick because I I find this to be a relevant question that I've asked other people. What were you taught about drugs, about magic mushrooms when you were an elementary school kid or middle schooler? Because in my experience, 
they were just using fear-based tactics, right? They were just trying to scare us away from using drugs. They weren't telling us any of the benefits for fear that we would become drug addicts for or sure. something, right? Did you have that experience where you were maybe scared away? Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't really say that I was scared away. Um, I did hear about psychedelics when I was younger and kind of like what they did, but I'm more so the type of person that when I know about something, I want to try it and I want to experience it for myself. And I think that's kind of what led me to experimenting with these at a younger age uh, when a lot of people maybe do have kind of fear-based bias around psychedelics. But yeah, going back to kind of like how my journey with or my relationship with psilocybin, uh, it started yeah, definitely more as a social thing. And I think that's kind of why it backfired at me early on in my usage is because I didn't understand or respect the plant at all and what makes you say it backfired did you have an unfortunate experience yeah I I mean I think I was really unaware of like myself and my tolerance and the first few times I used it I was taking like between two and two and a half grams Mm. and it was really nice it was really fun I remember just feeling more open and more happy and um I was in a setting both times where I was with a group of people and we were all enjoying this together and it was just kind of like you know, a social fun thing to do. Sure. And I've, I've seen in my research that the environment you're in, in which you, you take psilocybin is incredibly important. Like we've all heard about somebody having a bad trip, right? And that's exactly how my third one was. Yeah. That it can go, it can go very badly. And that very much depends on your environment and a lot of times who you're with, right? For sure. Have an experience. Yeah. So I think it was like, I guess, third or fourth times a time that I had ever. What was your age? At this point, I was 20 because it was okay. it was 2020. Oh, OK. And it was when COVID had Hard just started. Hard time for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. It was like two or three weeks into the pandemic. It was when everyone had to stay in their house still. And there was like. Yeah. It, just it, lockdown was everything. It was incredibly lockdown. enforced. Yeah. yeah. But me and my friend had happened to get our hands on a good few doses sure. of psilocybin before a nice way to put it before lockdown and so we we did it and it was it was all environment that made it go bad you're completely right we so set the scene for me where were you were so you outside we were, inside we were inside which i don't recommend especially if you're doing a full full dose right um i think it's really important to be connected with nature while mm-hmm. ingesting this plant right yeah. this makes this mother yeah from Mother Earth, and uh, we were inside, but not only were we inside, we were in the living room that I had been sleeping in the past two weeks, crashing at my friend's house back mm-hmm. at home, because I left, we le- we all left from sure. school, right? So you were in the cities, Minnesota, right? Minnesota, okay. yeah, and, and we were in this living room, and I had already been in there for a very long amount of time, mm-hmm. and we ingested the mushrooms around like 3.30, 4, and... What would you say, a couple grams each? Yeah, we had... We had gotten five grams, and I definitely mm. took the better better portion. Okay. So I would about, say I took around three. Yeah, two and a half, about three yeah. each. And I just want to remind the listeners that in all of these studies, these people were taking a quarter of a gram. right? Less than 10% of what I took. In yep, it. yep. And so um, a full dose that usually would last for, for most people between, I would say, like two and four four hours kind of just depending on again your environment yeah how much you've eaten that day a lot of different factors and that um it's usually around like 30 minutes to an hour after you ingest them that you really start feeling the full effects of the trip and so pretty quickly um into our I would say the first like hour and a half of our trip was really good and really fun we were painting whatever and then the sun started setting outside mm. and everything became dark. Environment change, atmosphere yeah, change. A hundred percent. And the thing is, I wasn't even aware of how those things would affect it, right? right. And so I was naive and I was uneducated. Was and I don't recommend not a consideration when you started this. And and I think that's a big part of when you hear about bad trips mm. is people being unaware and disrespectful to this plant, right? Because yeah. It's not treating it as just a fun time. Exactly. But that's this, not it's what not it a is. few beers at yeah. all. This no. is something that's gonna make you dive deep within and yeah. unlock things that you might not feel yeah. ready to deal you, with. You know you have some traumas or some issues, what have you. It's gonna probably come gonna come up. They want a way out. They do, and this plant's helping you get there. But yeah. if you're not ready, 
Mm-hmm. I don't advise taking that high of yeah. dosage. And I think that's really good advice. And that's where the like psilocybin assisted therapy comes in. And so, microdosing. Right. Yeah. You know, it's in yeah. a more clinical setting where there's a professional there to help guide you through what you're feeling. Someone who knows what they're doing and for sure. Seeing, and that's that's super important just as like comparing it to your experience, you know. And totally I didn't, different get, I didn't things, even get to but, the bad part yet, Alina. Right. I was a bird locked in a cage. Oh, like, tell me more. I mean, that's kind of all you need to know. Terrifying things, things and it, and it was it was very. Um, it didn't feel literal. It felt very mm. metaphorical. But I kind of realized, right, we're in lockdown. Mm. It's dark outside. I was stuck in this living room I had been stuck in for days. Mm-hmm. And I just felt I felt like a bird locked in a cage, and I felt like the government was locking us. And it was it was just a lot of. Yeah. What was going on in that time of my life. Impacting what the drug was doing. Yeah, and when I look back, I think I'm silly for expecting to have a good time. <laughs> like, duh. When I was doing so miserable. Did you so look at the world around right? you, right? Exactly. You're bound to have not as not a, not as fun of a time. Not a silly, goofy time. <laughs> not a silly, fun time with the girls. Like, it's just, it's going to be it's a little heavy. rough. It was heavy, yeah. and it was. And I sobbed, and I sobbed for like six minutes straight, and I feel like I released yeah. years. That was my next question. But how did you feel afterwards? I mean, it was exhausting. I so I also because of the antidepressants and medicine I was on as a as a high schooler as a teenager, I didn't. There was a point in time where I didn't cry for like five, at least five years. You were numb, emotionally yeah, I was numb. numb. You, I was numb. Yeah. So I had a lot of emotions in me that weren't aware they needed a channel out yet. Mm. And so I think that overusing and disrespecting psilocybin um, early in my journey with it was definitely reality a slap check. in the face. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say yeah. kick in the butt, perhaps. Everything was pouring out, and I yeah. wasn't ready quite yet. And I didn't realize that that's, that's what the plant was going to do for me, but mm-hmm. I do now. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, that's four years later, right? And there was a point in time where I don't think I ingested mushrooms for at least 10 months because I yeah. had had such a heavy trip. And well, I just, rightfully so. You scared yourself a little bit. And you need a break. Yeah. yeah you need to, you kind of need to unfold into this new person that you became because of what you went through in a trip, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And it takes time. Mm-hmm. And so Makes I didn't sense. feel ready again for a long time. And I, mm-hmm. and, and, and I, I say a lot with, with plant medicine is it speaks to you and it tells you when you need it. Right. Yeah. And like, and you got to listen to that because there's people that will be like, oh, I want a trip, but I don't I don't think I should or I'm scared. And I'm yeah. saying then don't yeah. because there's a part of you that, that doesn't feel ready that feeling, and you need to listen to that. Yeah, listen. Yeah. And I when mean, it's pushing you. And I'm sure it's, you know, you, you might have that anxiety or a little bit of nervousness before taking a dose. And that's that's different from knowing within yourself that. You have something yeah. to work through. I think that's. I think that it's really common um, before taking a dose, not necessarily to feel the anxiety, to, but but to feel the anticipation and maybe um, be really kind of like curious and yeah, sometimes a little bit apprehensive. But mm-hmm. but listen to your intuition when you know that it's worth it to go through what you might go through to to move on and to keep growing to and end changing, up on the other side. Yeah, right? then go for it. But if if you don't feel called, don't. Yeah. And I, I wanted to ask another question. I don't actually know what your answer is to this. Um, have you ever tried taking LSD or acid before? And if you have, could you compare the experiences? Because I just had... What are other names for LSD? I know I haven't taken acid. I'm very scared to take they're, acid. That's like an eight-hour trip, I've heard. Yeah, they're very similar. They're kind of interchangeable. We were actually just talking about it in psychopharmacology. And LSD is like the the main dose and acid could be any percentage of LSD in that dose. It could be okay added with other things. And I just wanted to no. to yeah, to make a distinction yeah. that I think a lot of people think that taking LSD and psilocybin is no. similar, but it, LSD they have is a man. It, but they're completely dip, right. One right. of them grew from the ground and one of them was made in a lab. Manufactured in a lab. Yeah. So there's gotta be differences. And I just wanted to like make that distinction to people and when you had said you you were a bird in a cage right people i think would take that very literally and i think with some that's just the way i'm putting words to my experience you guys i want you to know i didn't actually (laughs) see myself as a bird and i didn't actually see the the room as a cage it wasn't that literal but i really realized how i felt in the state of myself being and my soul existing in this real world Mm -hmm. and i think some drugs do have the ability to make a make those feel real. Make that feel real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I just, I just wanted to make the distinction no, that they're very different. There, there is a dosage that they call the hero's dose with psilocybin, and I believe oh. that is 
is three and a half grams. And when you go over three and a half grams, you can expect to have trips that are a lot longer and a lot more intense. Existential, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. And kind of um, can reach the levels of maybe a DMT trip mm. or something a lot um, kind of more into the realm. More intense. But yeah. they don't really... I, I don't recommend doing that. I have not done a yeah. hero's dose because yeah. I have heard scary stories with hero's doses. Yeah, better safe than sorry. And yeah. That was kind of a tangent, but I was just curious and just wanted to make that distinction. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were talking about something else. <laughs> oh, what do you know? Us going off track? That doesn't no sound way. like No us. way. We've been doing good. <laughs> we have been. We've been killing it over here. But so, yeah, I took about a year break at one point and... In the time, I think that there was kind of like a trend and a shift in the way that society was viewing psilocybin. Mm. And it was being... How do you mean? Um, maybe it wasn't actually a shift in society, but maybe it was you? a shift in my system. Sure. Yeah, in my perspective of yeah. the world. Your and maybe it was perception of the, tri- of the world. Of reality. And, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, that constantly changes, too, the more sure. that you do trip. And I guess I was starting to listen to a lot more podcasts about holistic healing and so of course those would have mentions of psilocybin Mm -hmm. or combo or dmt or uh, ayahuasca or any sort of plant healing medicines and so i started realizing the power and i think the magic that these plants hold and i my respect for them was growing a lot and i realized that i was kind of abusing their power Mm -hmm. in the beginning to play yeah and then it that's why it was kicking me right and so i i knew during this time i wasn't using i i felt like I had to kind of go through some growth and and shed some of my ego before I was ready to have another ego death. (laughs) And, um, but I was researching a lot and finding out a lot about it. And then before you move on, could you explain to me what an ego death is or just, I don't know, dumb it down. I mean, I feel like it sounds like some grand experience, but really we grow this huge ego and it's not all evil right a lot of our ego is just there to protect us Mm -hmm. but i the way i see ego as kind of a filter at which you get to view life in order to protect yourself right Mm. and so when you go through experiences or maybe you don't even necessarily feel like you go through an a, a physical experience in any way but you realize something about the way that you've been thinking about the world is very off um, well under this plant, then a part of your ego that really attached this identity Mm -hmm. to protecting you off of that thing has to kind of die because you don't connect to it anymore. Right. And so So you have to let go of it. This way in which you viewed and perceived and understood is gone now. It's dead. So... What, where do you start? <laughs> Something else has to has to begin. Yeah, that's, that's where the that's where the healing, that's where the growth, that's, that's where the rebuilding that's the healing comes and in. The growth, right? right? One and part of you dies only for another to flourish. Yeah, and and again, this is why I always. So I guess I I'll continue on my whole journey here, but this is it always comes back to why I have chosen microdosing in the mm-hmm. end is because having these huge moments of realization during trips. And then possibly being scarred a little bit by what you went through and needing time to shed who you were before that trip and, and rebuild who you are after. Yeah. yeah, and digest it all. Yeah. Um, that's heavy. Yeah. And so I think doing it slowly is just a lot more practical and helpful right. and beneficial. Yeah. But there was a, you know, a few years then when I was um, using psilocybin a lot more respectably. I was tripping at a dose that was always between two and two and a half grams because I knew that's what worked well for me. I was always finding a comfortable situation in nature. You were getting a therapeutic dose. Yeah. You weren't doing the, like, not necessary, not toxic, but that's what we would call your toxic dose. Yeah. Too much. (laughs) To unlock too many demons. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was sitting where I felt comfortable and I was, I was always inviting somebody with me not to trip but to experience the trip with me. And this person was always somebody that I really trusted and I felt completely comfortable around because if you want to have a good trip, you need to feel accepted by everybody around you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that's really going to come up inside of you. That's going to be something you're going to need to work through. And again, you might not even realize that you don't feel accepted by people around you. So that's going to be hard to work through. It's not going to be fun. Mm -mm. (laughs) But... And they're not... And and I also want to 
state that they're not always not fun either. The majority of the experiences of people like taking mushrooms is going to be a positive experience. They've all been at least good in some way. Right. Even if it's not during, but after the fact. Yeah. Obviously something. But even the ones that are bad, like they weren't bad the whole time. No. You know, there's hours where you're under this, but it feels like kind of, you do lose your connection to time. You're just kind of existing. Yeah. And you definitely are real. I don't think that they're ever necessarily bad. I think a better word is hard. Right. Yeah. It's because not like it's some not evil gonna, demon really well, shows up and scares you. What it's, doesn't kill you makes you stronger, exactly. right? Yeah. It's just and the things you need to work through. What you're going through is helping you. It's not happening in spite of you. It's happening for you. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Gandhi. <laughs> okay. But well, in the past, so then in, it's it's what? It's, it's almost May now. Yeah. 2023. And it was in December in 2022 that I actually started microdosing and... I had I had been traveling Asia in the summer where psilocybin is legal and it's mm. grown everywhere and it's extremely easy to access. Accessible. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's just it's a it's a beautiful part of their culture and everybody feels a bit lighter and a right. bit more patient and a bit more compassionate. It's like peyote with indigenous people and ayahuasca with the indigenous people in Peru. Exactly. Every culture they, they has have their something. Plant medicine. Uh-huh. Yeah. And if it's been working this long, why stop? Why if why it ban it? If it ain't broke don't fix it. Exactly. Exactly. But we tried. <laughs> <laughs> and we broke it more. And, we and now we just have everyone. a big, ugly, broken system. But it was really it was really a healing summer. And, and and I every time that I was able to have an experience with psilocybin in Asia, I I would literally physically write in my notes that I need mm. to make psilocybin a constant part of my future because I realized how much it was healing me. Yeah. And so I, I came home and I was doing a lot of research. I was finding sites that I could order like pre-packed capsules of mm. X amount of microdosing days. Yeah. For were you back in the States when you were doing I was. That? I was in Wisconsin. And that's what kind of stopped me from ordering it online. Right. Because it was illegal. Criminalized. And, yeah. all these, and I Sadly. just like, I don't want the trail. Sure. And I always, I believe in manifestation and I, I all the stars aligned, <laughs> if you will, and something came my way without me asking physically that person but it, yeah, the message the universe sent for me it, you know, the universe sent me my little delivery yeah. boy <laughs> I love a delivery boy especially if they're Bringing delivering mushrooms, mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> the best kind of delivery boy I can ask for anything else <laughs> and yeah the, the way that mushrooms have kind of found their way into my life and the people in my life that I've been connecting with more has been like really magic to watch unfold because I did manifest that into the mm-hmm. universe and not the universe is happening it back for to you. Me. Yeah, it's happening for you. Yeah, Always. but so I've been I've been microdosing for four months under the um, kind of guidance of my my counselor, my psychiatrist that I've been seeing How for three years. How often do you see them as you're taking? So you microdose every day. No, that's a really good question. And that's, that's been a, what that's I was been just a hard assuming. journey to figure out for me. So sure. the recommended um, kind of percentage or like ratio or whatever you want to call it is, I believe, three, four. So they say like three days on, four days off. Okay. And so See, I um, never knew you that. can kind of make up your schedule with that. And so when I first started, I was very excited and I did <laughs> seven days on, seven days off. Oh, because okay. I was like, that's still technically, you know, that's the rate, fine. it's the same yeah. ratio. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. And so I was taking them for a week and then I take a week off. And I did this for a month. So I had two, I had an on week and off week and on week and an off week. And the weeks that I was microdosing at this point too, I was, I think I mentioned earlier, I started with a bit too high of a dose. And so I mean, I was having fun and my days were great. And I would just finish my first semester of my senior year of college and I was on winter break and I had nothing to do. And so it was a really good time. But the off weeks were so hard because it was like for seven days, I was just under this plant medicine that was kind of like reconstructioning my brain. Very natural high. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'd come off it and I'd be like, holy shit, all these little things about the way I saw everybody in the world and myself. Like your brain zaps, but a little different. Yeah. Your brain's going physically hurt, but mentally I was like, what's going on? You've been giving me this chemical for an extended period of time. Why did you stop? Yeah. So I had to figure that out because it was hard. The off weeks, I was exhausted. I was sleeping so, oh, so, so, so much. And I was just, you already know how I am. I'm a sensitive person. I feel things deeply. And mm-hmm. so the changes I was feeling 
while microdosing were a lot to implement while not mm. with that with that um pattern. Yeah. So then I switched to doing every other day and I don't know. It was just it was weird. And I, you know also the type of person I am. I'm not I'm not big on planning things strictly like that. Mm-hmm. And so and I, I trust my intuition so deeply at this point in my life. Like I've worked on my relationship with her. And yeah. so like I have such a deep trust with her. Mm-hmm. And I got to the point after a few months of microdosing where I was like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to ask myself if I yeah. if I should take it you today. always trust Miss yeah. Intuition. Yeah. She's a nice girl. Yeah. She usually doesn't steer people wrong. No, she knows what I need. And yeah. so f- some weeks I don't really take any. And then some weeks there will be a four days where I'll sure. microdose. It kind of just... Depends. Depends how I feel. It's a process, learning process. Yeah. And what, you're only four or so months into it? Yeah. That's, you know, a drop in the bucket. Yeah. So you're just trying to figure it out. But it even seems through this process of figuring it out, you've still gotten so many benefits and 100%. learned so much about yourself and about psilocybin and what it can do for you and the people around you. And I literally don't want to die. Yeah. And that's like genuinely, when I said that to my therapist, she was like, "Wow, like I, I mean, and this is just one of the therapists I've worked for over the w- worked with over the last decade, like, and the amount of different prescriptions I've been put on, and it's not like I wasn't also just showing up for myself. I've been showing up for myself. Yeah, I've been putting the work in to heal, and I've you had that extra extra help, and yeah. helping hand, and that the natural aid, right? The processed things just weren't cutting it for you. How they don't cut me. it for so many. It was people. numbing, right? It, and and that's the opposite of what I feel with psilocybin. Is it's pushing me to fully feel, mm-hmm. and it's been exhausting. I've been sleeping a lot the past four months, and I've been kind of laying low. And I, you know, have really changed my priorities. But it's like the healing that I've done and the ways that I've changed slowly over the last four months are also magical. I'm so happy for you. And I've loved to, I've loved watching you change and just become more of yourself. I, I've <laughs> known you for a couple of years now. And when I first met you, you were crazy Mal. And I was you, really out of touch. You were, yeah, you were. I mean, I wouldn't have said that or have, would have been able to even see that right yeah but I've grown too as a person and it's been really fun to watch you grow and grow with you and learn from you and it's I agree yeah I'm so thankful look at us now look at us now look at us (laughs) kind of make it a damn podcast yeah (laughs) who would have thought right I'm proud of you yeah I'm proud of you too thank you for sitting down with me thank you so much and being so vulnerable and telling me about your experience and the honesty anytime I appreciate it thank you very much And thank you for listening. Everybody who listened and made it this far, you're a real one. This is a shout out to April. Love you, girl. (laughs) Outro.